Hello and welcome to the Cost of Capital Navigator. My name is Aaron Russo and I am an analyst here at Duffin Phelps. Thank you for joining me today as we take a deep dive into the Cost of Capital Navigator and all of its key functionality. Today I will be taking you through a case study using the Duffin Phelps Cost of Capital Navigator to estimate the cost of equity for a subject company. By the end of this video, you should be much more familiar and comfortable using the Cost of Capital Navigator and its various capabilities. The Duffin Phelps Cost of Capital Navigator is the new online platform that replaced the Valuation Handbook U.S. Guide to Cost of Capital in 2018. The Cost of Capital Navigator contains all of the critical size premia, industry risk premia, equity risk premia, and risk-free rate data and information previously published in the Valuation Handbook U.S. Guide to Cost of Capital. Later in 2018 and in early 2019, the remaining three books in the Valuation Handbook series will be transitioned over to the Cost of Capital Navigator. The Cost of Capital Navigator guides the analyst through the process of estimating the cost of capital, a key component of any valuation analysis, and puts all of the Duff and Phelps valuation data at your command. The Cost of Capital Navigator is accessible via desktop, laptop, or tablet, and can help you complete your cost of capital analysis in a more timely and accurate manner. Now let's do an overview of our case study. A U.S. institutional investor plans to make an investment in ABC Furniture Co., a household and office furniture manufacturer. ABC Furniture's cash flows are generated entirely in the United States, and the investor needs to estimate an appropriate weighted average cost of capital, or WAC, to price the investment. Today we will be estimating cost of equity, a component of WAC, for ABC Furniture using two different data sources, the crisp decile size study and the risk premium report study. We will be estimating the cost of equity for ABC Furniture using various build-up methods. However, if we wanted to use the Capital Asset Pricing Model, or CAPM, that is also available in the Cost of Capital Navigator. For this case study, the valuation date is March 31st, 2018. We will be using the Duff & Phelps Normalized Risk-Free Rate of 3.5% and the Duff & Phelps Recommended ERP of 5% as of our valuation date. ABC Furniture is a private company operating an SIC 25 furniture and fixtures. Here are some size characteristics of ABC Furniture. For instance, we estimate their market cap to be around $600 million, their book value of equity of $300 million, and they have $1 billion in sales. Let's get started. We begin by going to dpcostofcapital.com and clicking the blue login button at the upper right hand corner of the screen. Once on the login page, enter your unique email address and password and click the blue login button. This is the Cost of Capital Navigator dashboard. Anytime we make an update, it will be posted here. The gray bar on the left includes the home button and the resources section, which we will visit later in our case study. At the bottom left of the screen, we can review all of our past Cost of Capital estimates and at the bottom right of the screen, we can start a new cost of capital estimate. So let's start a new estimate. The first thing I have to do is name my estimate. As we said earlier, our subject company is ABC Furniture Co. After naming our estimate, we get to step one, general inputs, where the navigator asks us four high level questions about our estimate. As we said in our case study overview, the valuation date is March 31st, 2018. The next two questions are the home country and the investee country. Since we are a US-based investor valuing a United States company, we will keep these both at the United States. This means all of our inputs will be denominated in US dollars. The last thing we need is our subject company's industry, which we said is SIC 25 furniture and fixtures. So I could either type in a keyword like furniture and search that way, or I could search by SIC code. Now I can click save and continue. Now we're at step two, cost of capital equations. The cost of capital navigator contains two essential valuation data sets, the crisp SL size study and the risk premium report study. It also contains the high financial risk study, but we won't be using that in this case study. We won't be using the high financial risk study today because for this case study, we will assume that ABC Furniture is financially healthy. However, we would want to use the high financial risk study if we determined that our subject company were distressed or financially unhealthy. Within the crisp decile size study, we can do a CAPM plus size premium or a buildup. 
Within the risk premium report study, we can do a CAPM plus size premium or various buildup methods. And you'll notice that as I'm clicking through, my equations are changing based on the method that I'm in. Let's go back to the Chris Decile size study and we'll do a buildup example. The CRISP decile size study calculates size premia for 10 deciles ranked by market cap, with decile 1 comprising the largest companies and decile 10 comprising the smallest companies. My CRISP buildup equation is a cost of equity equals a risk-free rate plus an equity risk premium plus an industry risk premium plus a size premium. This grayed out equation at the top is a key so I can always keep track of my variables. I can hide the key or I can bring it back. The key also contains help icons in case I don't know what one of my variables are, for instance the industry risk premium. The way I edit the equation is I hover over the variable I want to edit and I click the edit button. Here in the input box I could type in a custom risk free rate of say 3% or I could choose one of the off the shelf options the navigator has for me from the drop down here. So I click on the drop down and I could use the Duffin Phelps normalized risk free rate or the spot 20 year treasury yield as of our valuation date. In our case study overview, we said we're using the Duffin Phelps normalized risk free rate of 3.5%, so I can click on that, then click save. The next thing I need is the equity risk premium, so I hover over and click edit. Here the navigator is going to automatically make me use the Duffin Phelps recommended ERP since I'm using the Duffin Phelps normalized risk free rate. This is because the two are developed in conjunction with one another, and the navigator is going to make sure I'm using them both for consistency. If I had used the spot risk free rate or a custom rate, I could also choose the 1926 to present historical ERP or the supply side long term ERP. So I'll just save the Duffin Phelps recommended ERP of 5%. The next thing I need is an industry risk premium. The navigator is going to ask me for an industry beta. Remember that an industry risk premium is simply an industry beta that's been translated into an up or down adjustment in the context of my buildup equation. The industry risk premium is calculated as an industry beta times the ERP that I've selected, in this case the Duffin Phelps recommended ERP of 5% minus the ERP that I've selected. Remember from our case study overview that ABC Furniture operates in SIC 25 Furniture and Fixtures, so we can go over to the drop down here and select the SIC 25 full information beta of 1.21. The navigator will automatically calculate my industry risk premium based on my industry beta which in this case comes out to 1.05%. The last thing we need to complete our buildup equation is a size premium. The navigator is going to ask us for a market cap. For ABC Furniture Co., we said the market cap was around 600 million, so I type in 600, and the navigator will automatically map me to the appropriate crisp decile and crisp decile size grouping. With a market cap of 600 million, we've fallen into decile 9 which contains companies ranging in market cap from 299 million to 656 million we also fall in the micro cap size grouping which contains companies from both decile 9 and decile 10 since we fall near the top of decile 9 with a market cap of 600 million let's go ahead and use the decile 9 size premium of 2.5 percent so i click on 2.5 percent then click save We've now calculated cost of equity for ABC Furniture Co. using the crisp decile buildup method, which in this case came out to 12.05%. All of the inputs I've used in this calculation are also labeled underneath their respective values. For example, I used the Duffin Phelps normalized risk free rate of 3.50% and the decile 9 size premium of 2.5%. Another thing I can do to keep track of my estimate is I can rename my scenario. I could rename it anything I want, However, I typically like to name my scenarios based on the risk-free rate and ERP I've selected. Since we're using the Duffin Phelps normalized risk-free rate and the Duffin Phelps recommended equity risk premium, I can go ahead and rename my scenario DMP, RF, and ERP. If I had wanted to use the CAPM plus size premium method to calculate cost of equity for ABC Furniture, I could click on the CAPM plus size premium tab. Here is the standard modified CAPM equation. Risk free rate plus a beta times an equity risk premium plus a size premium. The navigator automatically carried over all of my inputs, for instance the normalized risk free rate of 3.50% and the SIC 25 full information beta. However, 
If we had calculated a custom beta for ABC Furniture based off of various comparable public companies, I could hover over the beta and click Edit. Here I could type in my custom beta of, say, 1.4. However, as noted in the case study overview, we're only utilizing build-up methods today, so I'll go ahead and click Cancel. Now let's calculate cost of equity for ABC Furniture Co. using the Risk Premium Report study. The biggest difference between the Risk Premium Report study and the Crisp Decile Size study is that the Crisp Decile Size study calculates size premia based off of market cap, while the Risk Premium Report study calculates size premia and risk premia based off of market cap plus seven additional measures of size, for example, book value of equity and five-year average net income. Companies in the Risk Premium Report study are ranked by size into 25 portfolios, with Portfolio 1 comprising the largest companies and Portfolio 25 comprising the smallest companies. To learn more about the differences between the Crisp Decile Size Study and the Risk Premium Report Study, we could go into the Resources section of the Cost of Capital Navigator. We're going to leave our estimate for a second, but everything that we've done up to this point has been automatically saved. So I click into the Resources section and go to the 2018 Valuation Handbook U.S. Guide to Cost of Capital, and we could read Chapter 7, the Crisp Decile Size Studies, and the Risk Premium Report Studies, a comparison. To get back into our estimate, all we need to do is go to the Home button, then click on our estimate in the Recent Cost of Capital Estimates view. Within the Risk Premium Report study, I could do a CAPM plus size premium or various build-up methods. If I wanted to use the CAPM method within the Risk Premium Report study, I could click on the CAPM plus size premium tab and see eight CAPM equations for each of the eight size measures in the Risk Premium Report study. If I wanted to use a custom beta, I can hover over the beta and click Edit and change the value to my custom input. But let's start with the Build Up 2 method in the Risk Premium Report study. The reason I'm starting here is because the Build Up 2 equation in the Risk Premium Report study is an identical equation to the Crisp Decile Size study. The only difference is that the size premium will come from the Risk Premium Report study instead of from the Crisp Decile Size study. In the Build Up 2 method, I can see eight different equations for each of the eight measures of size we can use to estimate size premia for our subject company. At the top of the page, we can see that the navigator remembered that I've renamed my scenario DMP, RF, and ERP. It also remembers all of my inputs. For example, I used the Duffin Phelps normalized risk free rate, the Duffin Phelps recommended ERP, and the SIC 25 industry risk premium. The last thing I need is a size premium, so I hover over the size premium and click Edit. Since I already entered a market cap for my subject company in the Crisp Decile Size Study Buildup example, in this case it was $600 million, the navigator remembers that and it automatically calculates the size premium and maps me to the appropriate portfolio in the Risk Premium Report Study. I can click Save here and that's going to tell the navigator I want to use this in my results. Here we can see that a market cap of $600 million placed me in Portfolio 23 in the Risk Premium Report Study. Now that we've calculated cost of equity for ABC Furniture Co. using the Build Up 2 method with market cap as our size measure, we can do the same thing for our seven remaining size measures. You don't have to use all size measures available in the Risk Premium Report study, but the more you use, the better range of estimates you'll get. Now let's calculate cost of equity using book value of equity as our size measure. So I go down to the book value of equity line, hover over my size premium. ABC Furniture's book value of equity is 300 million, so I type in 300, and the navigator will automatically map me to the appropriate portfolio based on my book value of equity. Now I go over to the size premium and click Save. I can do the same thing for my remaining six size measures. We've now calculated cost of equity for ABC Furniture Co. using eight different measures of size using the Build Up 2 method in the Risk Premium Report study. To get our size premia, we're currently using what's called the guideline portfolio method, in which the navigator automatically maps us to the portfolio whose average size most closely matches our size measure input. To view the average size and other details about the portfolios in the risk premium report study, we can go into the resources section of the Cost of Capital Navigator and go down to Supplementary Risk Premium Report Study Data, Supplementary Data, Size Study. This document contains portfolio details for the two most recent years of data for all of the portfolios for each of the eight size measures in the Risk Premium Report study. 
For example, we fell in portfolio 23 based on market cap, so I can scroll down to portfolio 23 in the market value section, and we can see the average market value of equity, the number of companies in the portfolio, the average returns, the sum beta, etc. Let's go back into our estimate by clicking the home button and clicking on our estimate here. Let's go back into the risk premium report study and go to our build up to method. Instead of using the guideline portfolio method, another thing we can do within the risk premium report study is use what's called the regression equation method. The regression equation method enables us to calculate interpolated size premia and risk premia based on our direct size measure input. To toggle on the regression equation method, we can go over here to the toggle and click yes. The navigator will now recalculate all of my size premia based on the regression equation method and it displays the regression equations below. For the purposes of this case study, we're just going to use the guideline portfolio method. I can scroll back up to the toggle and toggle it back to no. Now all of my size premia are recalculated using the guideline portfolio method. Now let's calculate cost of equity using the buildup one method. The buildup one equation is a risk free rate plus a risk premium over the risk free rate, which combines both size and market risk and an equity risk premium adjustment. Let's click the help icon next to the ERP adjustment to see what it is and why it's necessary. The ERP adjustment is needed to account for the difference between the forward-looking ERP that we have selected to use in our calculations versus the historical ERP that is embedded in the risk premium over the risk-free rate. In this case, it's the 1963 to present ERP because the risk premium report study is calculated over the period 1963 to present. So again, the navigator remembers our inputs, so here's the 3.5% normalized risk-free rate, and it automatically calculated the ERP adjustment based on the 5% Duff & Phelps recommended ERP minus the 5.28% 1963-2017 historical ERP. The last thing we need is the risk premium over the risk-free rate. So I can hover over it and click Edit. The navigator will automatically remember the market cap entry of $600 million. So now I can click Save and the navigator will automatically map me to the appropriate portfolio. Now I can do the same thing for my remaining seven size measures. So here are our eight cost of equity estimates using the build up one method in the risk premium report study. Another thing we can do within the risk premium report study build up one is we can unlever the risk premia over the risk free rate and then re-lever them at a custom or target capital structure. This is useful because the guideline portfolio risk premia over the risk free rate assume the average capital structure of the companies that comprise the guideline portfolios. So if our subject company's capital structure were significantly different than those that comprise the guideline portfolios, we would want to consider unlevering and relevering. Since unlevering and relevering is available in the build up one method, the cost of capital navigator displays the average debt to equity ratio of the guideline portfolio we were mapped to. So under the risk premia over the risk free rate value, we can see the debt to equity ratios. For example, the companies that comprise guideline portfolio 23 ranked by market cap have an average debt to equity ratio of 31%. Up to the top under the scenario name, we can click on unlevered estimates and see what our cost of equity would look like if ABC Furniture Co. were financed 100% by equity. All we need to do to get our unlevered risk premium over the risk free rate is hover over the variable and click edit. Now the navigator will automatically unlever our risk premium over the risk free rate so we can click save now. We can see in the label that the debt to equity ratio embedded in the premium is 0%. Now we can do the same thing for the remaining size measures. Now I can go back to the top of the page under the scenario name and click relevered estimates to relever the risk premium over the risk free rate at ABC Furniture's capital structure. The first thing we need to do is enter our subject company's debt to market value of equity ratio. ABC Furniture's debt to equity ratio is 16.67%. Now I can click save. I can also click out of this green help screen which is just notifying us that relevering using the regression equation method is not currently available so it will default to the guideline portfolio method to get the relevered premium. All I need to do is hover over the risk premium over the risk free rate and click edit and the navigator will automatically relever the risk premium over the risk free rate at the debt to equity ratio that we entered. 
Now I can click save and the debt to equity ratio embedded in this calculation is now displayed underneath. In this case, the debt to equity ratio is 16.67%. Now I can do the same thing for my remaining seven size measures. So far, we have calculated cost of equity for ABC Furniture Co. using three different methods. We did a crisp decile size study buildup method, and in the risk premium report study, we did a buildup 2 and a buildup 1. Within the buildup 1 method, we also unlevered and relevered our estimates. One thing to note is that all the size premia and risk premia over the risk free rate that we have used so far come from the crisp decile size study and from the size study portion of the risk premium report study. This means that everything we've done so far utilizes premia based on the relationship between size and return. Within the risk premium report study, there's also something called the risk study, which analyzes the relationship between fundamental risk measures and return. Use of fundamental accounting measures of risk allows for direct assessment of the riskiness of the subject company. Within the risk study, we can compare the risk of our subject company in terms of fundamental accounting measures compared to the companies that comprise the guideline portfolios in the size study. If there is a large difference, this may be an indication of the company-specific differences in fundamental risk and may indicate a possible up or down adjustment to our cost of equity estimates developed using studies of size. As in the size study, 25 portfolios are created in the risk study, but instead of being ranked by eight measures of size, as is done in the size study, the risk study portfolios are ranked by three fundamental risk measures five-year average operating income margin, which is a measure of profitability, and the coefficient of variation in operating income margin, and the coefficient of variation in return on book equity, which are both measures of volatility of earnings. We can access the risk study in the buildup three method in the risk premium report study. Like my buildup one equation, the buildup three method is a risk-free rate plus a risk premium over the risk-free rate plus an ERP adjustment. Down below, I can see three equations for each of the three risk measures that we can use to calculate risk premia over the risk-free rate. We already have the normalized risk-free rate and the ERP adjustment has been calculated. The last thing we need is the risk premium over the risk-free rate. So on my operating margin line, I'll hover over the variable and click edit. The navigator is going to prompt me to enter in at least the three most recent years of data below. Since our valuation date is March 31st, 2018, I'll go ahead and change the first financial year to 2017. Sales as of year end 2017 was 1 billion. Now I'll enter in the remaining years. Now I'll do the same thing for operating income. Then the navigator will estimate the average operating margin and the coefficient of variation of operating margin for my five years of data. Operating income in 2017 for ABC Furniture Co. was $65 million. Now I'll enter in the remaining years. The navigator has calculated my average operating margin based on my five years of data, which comes out to 6.78%, and the coefficient of variation of operating margin, which comes out to 31.74%. Based on the average operating margin of 6.78%, the navigator will automatically map me to the appropriate portfolio based on operating margin from the risk study. So I can click save and we can see that we fell in portfolio 21 based on operating margin. Now we can see what our risk premium over the risk free rate would look like using coefficient of variation and operating margin as our risk measure. So I hover over the variable and click edit. The navigator will remember all of my inputs, but this time it will map me to the appropriate guideline portfolio based off of my coefficient of variation of operating margin of 31.74%. So now I go ahead and click save and we'll use that in our summary. Now we can calculate cost of equity using the coefficient of variation of return on equity as our risk measure. Here I need to enter in net income and book value information. Net income in 2017 was 21 million. Now I'll do the remaining years. Book value of equity in 2017 was 300 million. I'll do the remaining years and now based on my five years of inputs, the navigator will calculate the coefficient of variation of return on equity and map me to the appropriate portfolio. Based on the coefficient of variation of return on equity, I've fallen into portfolio 11. Now that we've calculated cost of equity using the risk study, we can go into the comparative risk study 
and see how ABC Furniture's fundamentals compare to the companies that comprise the indicated guideline portfolios or the portfolios to which we were mapped in the size study. At the top of the page under the scenario name, I can click Comparative Risk Study Adjustment where the navigator will compare our subject company's risk to the size portfolios and indicate whether we are more or less risky based on the three risk measures we estimated in Buildup 3. For example, ABC Furniture's operating margin was 6.8% compared to the average operating margin of the guideline portfolios to which we were mapped of 8.5%. Based on operating margin, we are therefore considered to be more risky than companies of similar size. Now that we've calculated cost of equity with three different methods using size inputs, the crisp decile size study buildup method, and the risk premium report study buildup 1 and buildup 2 methods, and also utilize the risk study in the risk premium report to compare ABC Furniture's fundamental risk to the companies that comprise the size portfolios in the risk premium report study, let's click on finish now to view our results. At the top of the results page, we can see the average and median of our cost of equity estimates developed in step 2 cost of capital equations. The average and median are broken out into the levered estimates, which have the capital structure of the crisp decile and the guideline portfolios embedded in them, the unlevered estimates, which we did in the risk premium report study build up one method, and the relevered estimates, which relevered the unlevered estimates at ABC Furniture's capital structure. If we had done the high financial risk study, we would see those results here as well. Over on the right, we can also see a range of estimates with our average and median cost of equity mapped with the high and low estimate. Below the average and median cost of equity for ABC Furniture are the industry average and median cost of equity estimates based on the SIC composite of the industry we selected in Step 1 General Inputs, in this case SIC 25 Furniture and Fixtures. Over on the right, we can see that ABC Furniture's cost of equity falls near the middle of the industry range. Below the average and median cost of equity is some of the information about our valuation. Here's what we entered in Step 1 General Inputs. Valuation date of March 31st, 2018. United States as our home and investee country. And SIC 25 Furniture and Fixtures. Below that are the size measures we entered in Step 2 and the average risk measures calculated in the Build Up 3 method of the Risk Premium Report Study. After that are some of the assumptions we used. So here's our Duff & Phelps recommended ERP of 5% the beta of 1.21 that was used to calculate our industry risk premium, and the Duff & Phelps normalized risk free rate of 3.5%. After that is the sourcing section for documentation. Below the sources section is the method summary breakout where we can review all of the equations we completed in step two cost of capital equations and see how the average and median cost of equities were calculated. It's broken out into the levered estimates, the unlevered estimates, the relevered estimates, and the high financial risk estimates if we had used those. Going back up to the levered estimates, we can expand the view and see all of the equations we completed. For example, I can expand my crisp decile size study and see the buildup equation that we used. I can do the same thing for the risk premium report study buildup one. See all my equations. I can do the same thing for the buildup two method and the buildup three method. Let's say we only used the buildup 3 method in order to calculate the risk measures for ABC Furniture so we could compare its fundamental risk to that of the companies that comprise the guideline size portfolios in the risk premium report study. If we didn't want to include the buildup 3 results in the calculation of our average and median levered cost of equity, we could click the hide from summary button next to our equation to exclude these equations in our average and median calculations. The navigator will then recalculate the average and median levered estimates excluding the buildup 3 equations. We will now see the average and median levered cost of equity recalculated reflecting the exclusion of the buildup three equations both here and at the top of the page. Now that we are finished with our estimate, we can export our results to PDF for documentation. We can also export all of our equations to Excel to integrate into another Excel model. For additional support, we can go into the resources section of the Cost of Capital Navigator and download PDF versions of the chapters from the Valuation Handbook, U.S. Guide to Cost of Capital, regarding theory, methodology, and examples of using the data. For example, since we are using the Duff & Phelps Normalized Risk-Free Rate and the Duff & Phelps Recommended ERP in our estimate for ABC Furniture Co., 
We could go into the 2018 Valuation Handbook, U.S. Guide to Cost of Capital, and click on Chapter 3, Basic Building Blocks of the Cost of Equity Capital, Risk-Free Rate, and Equity Risk Premium, and review all of the methodology and support regarding how Duff & Phelps developed its risk-free rate and ERP recommendations. We can also save or print this chapter. We could also download supplementary data for the CRISP decile size study and the risk premium report study. Going back into the navigator, I can click on supplementary CRISP decile size study data and view additional information regarding the CRISP decile size study, including summary statistics of annual returns of basic U.S. asset classes calculated over the period 1926 to present, which is the period over which the CRISP decile size study is calculated. I can also view additional decile detail. Since ABC Furniture's market cap of 600 million placed it in decile 9, we can scroll down to decile 9 to view additional detail about that decile. We can view the breakpoints of the decile, which as of December 31st, 2017, were 299 million to 656 million. We can also view the returns, the standard deviation, and the OLS and the sum beta. We could do the same thing for the risk premium report study and view supplementary data regarding the size study, which we saw earlier, and the risk study. We have now completed our case study of using the Duff & Phelps Cost of Capital Navigator to estimate cost of equity for our subject company, ABC Furniture Co.